Hey everyone, this is a clip from a recent episode of Another Pass, where we talk about movies and all the struggles that go into making them. If you like it, check out the whole podcast. You can find it at certainpov.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, so we're, we're so again, we're talking about the 1980 Robin Williams-led Popeye movie, which I hadn't seen before. Yeah, it's it's and his I have thoughts. <laughs> it, it's his very very first uh, feature film, right? before he did this uh was i can't remember where it, i can't remember where it lands with the cancellation of mork and mindy because his star of course blew up with mork and mindy and he then try was desperately trying to like make the crossover from tv to movies and this was his first big shot and of course abc shit on him with how the uh cancellation with Mark and Mindy went where he read it in a trade paper <laughs> instead of like them actually giving him a call. Yeah. So uh, at least according to Wikipedia, Mark and Mindy went on after this. So he was in the throes of Mark, Mark and Mindy fame at this point because Mark and Mindy was canceled in 1982. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 So this was like, yeah. So this was still him trying to like capture that because, you know, he's a superstar in California with his comedy gets discovered for Mark and Mindy. His, his early career is just so weird because the reason he was discovered for Mork and Mindy was the writer for the head, uh, the executive producer for Happy Days was like, his son stopped watching Happy Days. He's like, well, son, why, you know, you loved Happy Days. Why'd you stop watching it? Like Star Trek was on. And so he was, or like Star Trek reruns were going on. And he was like, uh, he was like, is, is, there's no space, there's no aliens in it. There's no spacemen. And so he goes, t- and so he goes to the writers, the executive producer and says, put in a spaceman in happy days. And they're just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and he, and Williams was hitting the audition scenes a bunch. Um, and when he went in to audition for Mork, he uh, did the entire audition upside down on the couch. He just walks in, flips himself over, <laughs> and just does the rest of the audition like that, totally straight. I mean, I I believe it. I, like yep. it's Robin Williams. Yep. Like hot take. When you say his the beginning of his career was so weird, his whole career was pretty weird. I mean, like yeah. For example, he did back to back, the Fisher King, Hook, and Fern Gully. Yep. Yep. Like those are some that's some weird pivoting right there mm-hmm. and all that. I mean, like he did the birdcage back to back with Jumanji, back to back with Jack, like Yeah. <laughs> like there's so oh, many God, weird Jack. properties he's done over the years. <laughs> <laughs> and and we all love him. Like he was a national treasure. Yeah. I, I don't want to revisit Jack. I, d- I don't think that one will hold up. I don't I don't know if it really held up at the time. <laughs> 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 but I didn't realize it. You know? Like Yeah, I mean like I, I and I don't want to like like obviously that's the weird one where it's it's a Francis Ford Coppola movie about a ten year old who looks forty. That's a weird pitch right there. Uh, but that also is famously him, Coppola trying to dig his way out of debt uh, because of his own studio failing. So like there there that's just a weird movies all, uh, abound. And but like Robin Williams is this like crazy actor who is infamous for like this like weird comedic style that there's so much energy. He's also a talented dramatic actor who, you know, of all the big comedians to like cross over into drama, I feel like he's had the most success over the course of his career. Yeah. I mean, like he is Juilliard trained. Like yeah. he, like that's where he met. Juilliard Christop- trained. Exactly. Roommates with Christopher Reeve. <laughs> yeah. No. Friends with Christopher Reeve. Roommates with Batman. Oh, with Kevin Conroy? Yep. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Just, a, Yeah. Yeah, as so. interesting a man behind the camera as he was in front of the camera. Yeah, yeah. And and this is the, the point where that fame is spiking. Um, mm-hmm. And it's it's such a weird fucking movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, but before we get into, like, the deeper discussion, I'm curious. So I had never seen this before you brought this as a suggestion, Angela. So... Angela, since you're our guest, what's your association with this movie? Uh, well, kind of, um, I can't remember if it was on mic or off mic, but kind of similar to Sam's where, like, when I was a kid, 
Absolutely loved the Popeye shorts. Was on Cartoon Network or had them on VHS or whatever. Just like I, I loved them so much that like that's Popeye's the reason I eat canned spinach. Like, <laughs> I prefer canned spinach because of Popeye. He did his job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I loved I loved the the, the cartoon shorts. Which fun factoid um, is one of the reasons we have Jack Kirby in comics because he was an in betweener for the Popeye shorts. It oh, was okay. like and mm. uh, he was like, dear God, I hate this. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just drawing something that is not, I did not write and like drawing just small variation. Cause like an in between, for those that don't know, an in betweener in animation, like you have the big poses and that's like what the head animator does. So like they'll go for one pose and then they'll they'll draw another pose and the in-betweener has to get the character from A to B. And so that's what Kirby was doing. That's how you enter animation. And he hated it. Um, which makes sense because his works are very much the like his comics read very much like, oh, this is the like these are the extreme panels of Right. Movement. He's known for these like big action scenes that are like yeah, he's he's he mm-hmm. always wanted to be the person being like, no, this is the panel you get to, not not the shit in between. Don't care about the shit in between. Fuck yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so he he did that for a little while and then quit. Um, just a fun little factoid there. But anyway, so since I loved the cartoons as a kid, uh, my dad one day at like Sam's Club, which has like a weird, always like a weird amalgam of DVDs. Uh, especially like 20, especially like 15 years ago. So my dad bought the Popeye movie because like, well, it's Robin Williams. She loves Popeye and just like, and bought the DVD when he was shopping for groceries one day. And so that's when I first saw it. Uh, and so, yeah, and I've, I've watched it like probably four or five times since then, like since he's gotten this uh, over the years. Not one like I've returned to like every year, but like, you know. Every couple years, I pop it in. But yeah, I have this this old weird Sam's Club DVD copy of it. Uh, Sam, Angela alluded that we talked a little bit off mic, but when for for the audience, what is your association with this movie? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so similarly, uh, I also had a lot of po- like watching the Popeye shorts. Actually, um, so uh, there was a there was a time in in the mid eighties where Burger King would give away VHS tapes with like a meal. And um, like they, there was like a month where they were giving away like Felix the Cat, Betty Boop cartoons, and Popeye cartoons. And then I'm pretty sure that this movie was one of the things that we got at Burger King. And so I would make my parents play this VHS numerous times, not over and over. That was the sound of my music, which my mother hid from me. Um, for about six months until I could find it again. And I was like, Mom, I found it. She was like, how did you? I mean, wow, you did. Um, <laughs> but but um, <clears throat> there's a theme because there's music in both. So my poor mother. So yeah, so I my association with this film is, you know, I really loved the Popeye shorts. I actually think that the movie itself kind of pays good homage to the animated shorts um even though it's very screwy um but yeah this is a movie that that I watched a lot as a kid and honestly after re-watching it after years of not seeing it I'm wondering if I should get my parents an apology gift of some sort just just a little like th- thank you for just letting me take over the tv for <laughs> far too long because this movie is a little longer than I expected it to be for a joint juncture Walt Disney film for children based on Popeye. Yeah, it's it's a solid two hours. Yeah. Uh, not yep. Definitely not a tight 90. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's wild because this movie actually was unfinished. Yeah, te- t- yeah, <laughs> technically. Yeah, because it was... Uh, yeah, I was reading about that last night where the specifically the octopus at the end was one of the last things they were filming and it just kept not working and driving up the cost of the movie so they finally just yelled at the director it was just like just take what you have 
you're done. Which is also weird because it was 20, it ended up being about $20 million cost. I don't know what its original budget was supposed to be, but it ended up making, it's considered a flop, but internationally it made 60, like total gross was 60 million. Yeah, it's financially not a flop. It was not loved by critics at the time, although yeah. uh, there's there's a special critic that liked it a lot, and that was Roger Ebert. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and his quote drives me to madness reading it. It is possible to take the broad strokes of a comic strip and turn them into sophisticated entertainment. There's a lot of things going on in this movie. I don't know if I'd call any of it like particularly sophisticated. Remember, if you like that clip, check out the podcast. You can find it at certainpov.com or wherever you get your podcasts.